Well, welcome to today's Roots Magic webinar. My name is Michael Booth, and I'm Vice President of Roots Magic and one of its developers. And also with us this evening is the Roots Magician himself, Bruce Busby. And Bruce, of course, is the President of Roots Magic and its author. Now, while a Roots Magic file can hold multi while a Roots Magic file can hold multiple trees and branches of your family history, you sometimes may find it necessary to split a large database or combine several databases into one. And tonight, we'll show you how you can do both. And with that, I'll turn the time over to Bruce. Hey, thanks for joining us. Okay, um, what we're going to talk about here today is, is how to split a big database into smaller databases, uh, how to maybe remove a line from your file, and that kind of involves the splitting the database, and then also how to combine files. So if I have um, more than one uh, database that I want to try to combine in and make a bigger one, then um, we're going to talk about how, you, how we can do that as well. So let's go ahead and get started. What I have is just a sample database. This is our uh, our usual sample not non real people file and so what I want to do is uh, the first thing I want to talk about is splitting a line out in other words I've got my database right here and I want to take another lot a part of this database and create a new database with just that part split a little piece of that out so there there's several ways you can do things like this one of those is to use JEDCOM uh, JEDCOM is a file format that lets that you can export it, import data back in, and so I could go up to File and then go down to Export and export a JEDCOM file and select the people I want, and then go create a new blank database and import that line in. Okay, but we're not going to talk about that. We do have another webinar where we talk about working with files, working with JEDCOM files. I'm going to show you the easier way to do this. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create a new database. In other words, I want to take one of these lines. Let's say I want to take this Thomas K. Jones and his ancestors, and I want to create a new database with just that line, or maybe maybe Floridel. A lot of times you may have a database um, of yourself, and somebody wants to get a copy of a, of a file that has just your father's line or just your mother's line. So let's say they want just your mother's line. Well, let's see how we, we can do that. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new database because I want a new Roots Magic file to put this into. So I'm going to say new database and I'm going to call this mom's line. You can call it whatever you want, um, but that's what I'm going to call it. When I do that, Roots Magic is going to create a new database, a blank database called mom's line right here. Okay, now watch carefully because this is really complicated. Okay, it's it's not. I'm just I'm just teasing here. Um, I want to take Floridel Jones and her line and put it in this database. So I'm going to click on Floridel, and I'm going to while my mouse is down, I'm going to click and drag her over to this database, this new blank database. And Roots Magic is going to say, "Who do you want to copy to this new to this other database?" And I could copy just her. What I want is I want to copy her ancestors, although I also want the children, so that the children of each of those ancestors, in other words, what would be on the family group sheet for each of those ancestors, that's what I actually want. Now, I have other options. I can do the descendants of her. I can do everybody in the same tree as her. I can do everyone in the entire database. Or I can say, bring me up that list to select from, because all I want to do is bring over people whose last name is Smith who were born after 1880. So I can do that. But for right now, for our purposes, I just want the ancestors, and I can choose how many generations. So if I actually only wanted a couple of generations, I could do that, but I can leave this at some high number to get as many generations as I want. I click OK, and there we are. I have now copied Floridel Jones and her ancestors over into this tree. Now, it doesn't look quite like I did. If you look at this, it's showing this Sarah K, um, the Sarah Ann K rather than Floridel Jones. And that's because what Roots Magic does is when I bring somebody over into a new database, 
Roots Magic just says, well, I don't really know who should be the starting person, so I'm just going to pick the person with the lowest record number. And so this Sarah Ann Kay was, was probably a, another child in here somewhere, and she was entered before Floridel was. Now, if I want Floridel to be this starting person, I just make sure to set her as the root person. And the way I can do that is make sure this is the database that's selected, go to Tools, and come down here to the File Options. And I have an option right here, Root Person. And you can see right now it's Sarah Ann K. But the one I, person I want is Floridel Jones. So I'm going to click that, and I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to select Floridel Jones. She is now the root person, although I do have to, I do actually have to do the Control Home to actually select it. So there she is, Floridel Jones and Thomas and Myra, just like we have here. This entire line is now in this database. So that is how I can split out a line from my main large database into a new database. Just create the new database, drag and drop the person, and choose which people I actually want to go uh, right in there. Okay, now, as I mentioned, there are several other um, options that I can do uh, for this. Let me go ahead and I'm going to delete this database. And I'm going to create another new database and um, I'm going to call this uh, Smiths. Okay, so this database is called, this new blank database is called Smiths. So now when I want to bring somebody over, I can pick anybody. It doesn't really matter. I can drag and drop somebody. And then instead of picking just this person, I can say I want everyone, or I want to let me select people from a list. And when I do that, Roots Magic brings up a list. This is a list of everybody in my main database. Okay, and so I want to mark all the Smiths. I want a database with just the Smiths. Well, you can see I actually have quite a few Smiths here, and I really don't feel like going down here and going check, check, check. I don't want to go, have to go through and check them one at a time. So I can say I want to mark a group of people. And when I do that, it says, what group of people do you want? And I can select a person's family or ancestors or descendants, but I want to do select people by their data fields. Okay, and that's going to bring up this, this kind of scary looking screen, but it's not scary at all. What, what I'm doing is I'm telling it which people, how to, how to decide which people to mark. And so I can select a field, and the field I want to select is the surname. Okay, that's the last name. And then I can say the surname equals or does not equal or, or is less than or greater than or is blank or whatever. So I'm just going to keep it with equals. Smith. Okay, in other words, mark everybody whose surname equals Smith. And I can get fancier. I can say and or this, and or this, and or this. But I'm happy with just surname equals Smith. Click OK. And it says it's marked 35 people. And if I, you scroll, you'll see it's basically anybody whose last name was Smith is now marked. Click OK. Copied the people. And now on this database, the only people that I have are going to be the Smiths. So if I go in and look at here, you'll see this database, that's all I have, or just Smiths. Okay, that's all I've got right there. So I can, I can use this drag and drop to copy data from my main database into another in almost any kind of fashion that you can think of. You know, I can, I can bring over a line, I can bring over, uh, you know, for people based on criteria or so on. Now there's one last trick that I want to show you, and I'm going to go ahead and delete this one right here. Uh, again, we're going, to, we're going to go ahead and delete this, this database we just created. And once again, I'm going to create a new database, and I'm going to call this one um, Mom's Line. This is, this is this kind of the same name, but there's, there's a trick that I want to show you here, um, and, and, and kind of a mention of a gotcha. So sometimes, sometimes you may have more collateral lines than, than just, uh, in other words, if I wanted to bring Floridale, if I wanted to bring her over into this new database, when I do this drag and drop, 
I have the options of the ancestors, you know, which just gets me dad, mom, the grandparents, the great grandparents, and so on, or ancestors and their children. Now, what that doesn't get is if their children were also married, it doesn't get those spouses. If those children, uh, if their spouses' parents were entered, it doesn't get those either. It gets just the parents, grandparents, great grandparents, and then the aunts and uncles. That's all it gets, which most of the time, that's probably all you really are interested in. But sometimes you may want to get all of those other collateral lines. In other words, once you go and get Thomas and you get Thomas William Jones, well, you're going to get all of Thomas K. Jones's brothers and sisters as well, no problem. But if those brothers and sisters were married, you're not going to get those spouses or the spouse's parents or anything. So let's say I do want them. Well, what I need to do is when I do the drag and drop, I want to do this option, everyone in the same tree as Floridell Jones, because what that's going to do is that is going to go kind of brute force through and get everybody connected to her tree. So as that goes up, that's going to get her father and her grandfather, and then it's going to get all the brothers and sisters, and then it's going to get the spouses and the parents and everything. The problem with that, though, is that since it's getting everybody in her tree, it's also going to go up and get her son, and then it's going to go and get her son, her husband, and her husband's family. So at that point, all of a sudden, you're getting basically the whole database, which is not what you want. So if you want to get all of those collateral lines, what you'll need to do is before you drag and drop Floridel, you're going to need to unlink her from this family so that it doesn't go get her son and her father or in her husband. And so I can actually highlight, highlight her, and I can come back up to edit, unlink, from spouse, and Roots Magic's going to come up and say, do you want her to unlink from this family? In other words, do I want to unlink her from Howard and James and the other children? And I'm going to say yes. Okay, so now I have just her. I have her and her parents, and all of this line, along with all the spouses and children, spouses, and all of that, all of those collateral lines are in here. She's just not connected to that other half of the tree. And so at this point, I can drag and drop her, and then say everyone in the same tree as Floridel. And when I do that, that's going to get me um, all of these others. And for some reason, it went ahead and... Uh, it went ahead and got, okay, it went ahead and got her, got the rest of them somehow. Um, and, and that's going to be, that's going to be a gotcha. And this particular database may have this problem. If, if that other line is connected through cousin marriages up in the tree, once again, it will, uh, it will come back, um, it will come back through, through there. So, Floridel, um, what's happening is there, there's going to be a link up here somewhere where it is linking into this into the other half of this family. So that's that's what's going to um, that's what's going to be happening right there. Okay, um, but and so so if you have if you have uh, cousin marriages up in your tree, this becomes a lot tougher and it may be more work than it's worth. Um, uh, try, trying to actually pull that out separately, you might actually be better off just doing the ancestors with the children. Okay, so let me go ahead and I need on my main database, once I've done that, I need to go back in and I need to link her. Well, let me go, let me go delete this database first, get it out of the way here. Once, once you've brought them over, her her husband and and children are still in this file and so i need to link her back in so the way i would do that is i would highlight her and i would say add a spouse and i need to select an existing person and that selected selected person was howard howard smith junior 
and I'm going to say I, I, maybe there was a marriage, maybe there wasn't, I don't happen to know it. So I've done that, and that has linked her back into that family. Okay, so, um, so that, that basically gives me, get, links me back, back into the family. Just be careful when you do this. Uh, make sure that when you, when you unlink somebody from their family, write down the information about who they were linked to to make sure you actually get them linked back into the right place. I think I actually probably linked her into, back to the wrong person here because I'm not seeing the, seeing the children right here. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've, I've linked her back, back to the wrong person, but that's fine. We, we can continue to work with this from here. Okay, so next, next thing we want to do. Let's say I want to, um, actually I'm going to do it this way, Howard Smith. I'm going to say add a spouse, and I'm going to pick Jones Floridell. Okay, it says they're already, that's, let's go ahead and what we're going to do is we are going to delete this, this fake family. Okay. Okay. I'm not sure why that's not doing that, but let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and move on to the removing a line, removing a line from your file. So, let's say I've got this particular file, and I want to create a file that has this particular line, but I don't want this anymore. What we did last in previously is we actually went through and said I've got a database here and I want to t split out some data to another database. Now when I split that data out to that other file, it remained in my main file. In other words, it didn't move it out and put it in the other file. What it did is it just created a file that had a copy of that other information. That's what's splitting your data out. Now there may be times when you actually want to delete information uh, from a from particular file, and so I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, we don't have, Roots Magic does not have a way to select Phoebe and say delete her and all of her ancestors. That would be a tech support nightmare for us um, because we, we would have a lot of people we know who would do that and then call us and say, I didn't really want to delete that, and unfortunately we, there's not a way for us to tell them how to get the stuff, they the massive amount of names that they just deleted back into their file. So th there's a trick to, cre to removing a line, and that trick is to create a copy of your database, okay, in other words, make a copy of your database, but don't include the lines you don't want, okay, and let me, sh let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to go in, and what I want is this, this, this tree right here without this blue line. I want to get rid of that blue line. So I'm going to go up and I'm going to create a new blank database and I'm going to call this um, removed line. Okay, so now again I have my blank database here and what I want is I'm basically going to create a copy of this file without this line. Okay, and then this new file will be my database that doesn't have this line in it anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop, and it doesn't matter, I can drag and drop anybody I want, because the option I'm going to choose is let me select people from a list. Okay, and from that list, I'm going to be able to uh, select the people I actually want. So I'm going to do that. Roots Magic's going to bring up that list of people right there, and that's everybody in my database. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say mark everyone in the database. Okay, so what you're seeing is every single name is checked. So if I were to click OK right here, what it would do is it would make an exact copy of my database. It would copy every person over there. But what I want is I want every person 
except for Phoebe and her ancestors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to uh, Phoebe Davis, and she's going to be right here, Phoebe Sophia Davis. I'm going to highlight her, and I'm going to say unmark people. And I'm going to say unmark ancestors. So I'm unmarking those ancestors. I'm unmarking that line that I don't want anymore. And when I do that, you'll see it has now, her and her parents and all of those folks, have been unmarked. So the people that are now checked is everybody in the file except for Phoebe and her ancestors. So when I say OK, OK, it's copied them over. And here is my database. It's the full database, except it does not have this line in it anymore. OK, so that is how you can go and create a copy of your database that's missing a particular line. So if you happen to have a database and there's there's some information in there that you haven't really wanted to continue to be in there, that's how you can do it. Whether it's marking everybody, that's the way you'll start, and then unmarking a line, or saying everybody whose last name is Smith, I don't want them in my file anymore. You would, in that case, you would drag and drop, you would select everybody, and then you would go in and say, unmark people based on their data and then unmark everybody whose surname equals Smith. And that will give you a copy of your database, except it will strip out everybody whose last name is Smith. Okay, so that's how you can actually go in and remove a line from your file. Okay, um, so, so we have a question, does that eliminate the ancestors' children? Um, in, the, in what I did, when I did it, it didn't because I only selected to unmark the direct ancestors. But there, if I had selected to unmark the ancestors and their children, then that would have removed the ancestors' children as well. Okay, and and you can get you can you can get as um, as detailed as you want when doing this. You know, because once I have that list of everybody in my database, I can, and once I've marked everybody. Anybody that gets unchecked, those folks won't get moved over to the new file. So I could go in and say, unmark this person and their ancestors. I could go in and say, um, you know, unmark this person and their descendants as well. And so I can, I can take multiple steps. So I, and then I could go in and say, oh, I've got this one straggler uh, who's still checked, you know, and I can just go uncheck them. So anybody that's unchecked when I say OK is going to be left out when, I, when it copies this, in, this information over. Now, there was a question earlier on, and I probably ought to cover that right now. Um, they were asking, when I do this drag and drop, does it bring over citations and pictures and things like that? And the answer is yes. When I drag and drop a person or a group of people, it's going to bring over everything about that person. It's going to bring over all of their facts, it's going to bring over their, um, their sources, their citations, their media, their to-do list. You know, it's going to bring over all of those particular things. Now, the one place that it won't is if I, for example, were to drag and drop Howard Smith Sr. over here and say only him, in other words, I don't bring over anybody except for Howard Smith Sr., if I do that, any family facts that he has with Phoebe, those won't come over because I didn't have Phoebe come over. And since by bringing over Howard without Phoebe, the family record does not come over, and therefore anything that belongs to the family, like family events like marriages and divorce and engagement and family pictures, those would not come over. So if I want the family events to come over, I need to make sure I bring over the spouse as well. Okay, um, a question, why would you want to delete a line? Um, probably the main reason you would want to do that is if you've imported a GEDCOM file from somebody and you happen to find that it had more uh, information, more lines in there than you actually were interested in, 
and so you wanted to get rid of those lines. That's that's one reason. There's probably a number of um, a number of reasons as well. Okay. Uh, the final thing we're going to talk about is combining files. In other words, I have two different files, and they each have some information, um, but they don't both have all the information. And honestly, I can actually use this these two files I have up here as an example. So what I would do is I would actually open up the two files that I'm interested in, open them up side by side, and the only thing I have to do to do that is just go to the File menu and click on Open. When I do File Open, it will open up. Uh, the new file side by side with whatever file I already have open. And then, again, like when we were doing splitting, I can use drag and drop to combine files. Okay, so if I had two files and they had completely independent information, but I wanted to put them both in the same file, I could do that. I could highlight a person, drag him over to the other database, and then say, I want everybody in the database, and click OK, and Roots Magic would bring everybody in this database and put them into this database. Now, when I do that, Roots Magic is going to just drop all of those names in the new database. It's not going to try to connect them together because it has no idea how the people in this file are related to the people in this file because you haven't told it. You've just brought a bunch of names over. Now. There are situations where Roots Magic can go ahead and link the, the files together because you can give it enough information. So, for example, let's say I want to bring Phoebe. In other words, this file is one where I created it and I stripped out Phoebe Davis and her, her line. Well, I have it over here. Let's say what I want is I want to bring Phoebe and her line into my database. Well, instead of just clicking on Phoebe and dragging her and just dropping her randomly, I can drag her and drop her on the location where she needs to go. In other words, I can say I can drop her at the, on the mother slot if she happens to be the mother here. I'm going to drag her, and I'm going to say I want the ancestors. Now, when I do that, when I drag a person and drop them on a particular slot, I'm going to get an option down here. In the past, what I've been showing you, this option's always been blank, but right now, Roots Magic is saying, is Phoebe, the person you dropped, the mother of Howard Smith Jr.? And if she is, I'm going to say yes. If you check this box, Roots Magic will automatically add her as the mother in this family, which means when I click OK, Roots Magic's going to dr basically drag and drop, copy that line over into this database, and then add her as the mother, so it's going to link her in. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, and there she is. So when I drag and drop a person um, from one database into another database, it's going to give me that option. Now there are some cases where um, where it may not, it won't do that um, because because it may not make sense for it to do that. Now one thing that's really nice is that this works from all of the views. It's not limited to just this pedigree view. This is what we have happened to be working on, but we're not limited to be do, using it just on the pedigree view. So, for example, if I happen to uh, go to a family view right here, and I have some children right here, let's just pick somebody. This is this is not this is not. Uh, you know, real, so it doesn't really matter how we kind of mangle these, these files up in this case. You'll want to be more careful with your real data, obviously. But let's say that this Uriah Davis happened to be a child in this family. Well, I can click and drag Uriah, and it doesn't ma matter which screen I drag it from. I can click and drag Uriah and drop him into the child area, and then I can say, I want to copy just Uriah, and is Uriah the child of Howard and Phoebe? And if I say yes, okay, it has not only brought him over, but it's added him in as a child. So this works from any of the views. It works from the pedigree view, the family view, the descendant view. Um, you know, so any place where it makes sense to be able to do this, um, it, it will let you do that. And I can drag from a particular view. So if I'm in a family over here, 
if I'm in this family view and I see that um, Elizabeth right here was the mother of Dr. Jane Smith, I can drag her from here and drop her here, and it's going to say as Elizabeth, the mother of James Smith. I'm not going to do this because I don't want to mangle this database too badly. Um, but I could check that, and Roots Magic would take Elizabeth and add her in uh, as the mother right here. Now, there's also situations where, um, where you may have um, other information. So I'm actually going to, let's go ahead and delete this, file, this one here again. And I've got another database right here called main2. Okay, this particular database, um, this particular database, James Smith is Howard's father. So in, in theory, I could click on James and drag and drop him up to the father slot. Okay. Um, and, and, and that's what we've shown you how to do before. But let's say, let's say, um, I'm going to add a new person right here. Okay, I'm going to add this person right here. And um, so I've got James Smith. So this James Smith, um, uh, that's not what I wanted. I wanted him to be named Howard. Okay, this is Howard. So this Howard is the same as this Howard. In other words, because we have James up here and we have Howard up here. I'm going to, if, if, I, if I drag James up to here, you're going to notice I have this option. If you check this box, Roots Magic will add James as the father. But let's say I drag Howard. Well, if I drag Howard, I don't want to drop him on a an empty spot, I want to drop him on a copy of him that's already in the database. And when I do that, it's going to say, are these two Howards the same person? And if I check this, and I'm not going to because it's going to bring in Ruth Ann Mills, and so that would be a d duplicate a lot of that information. If I were to check this and do this, what it's going to do is it's going to bring over this line into my database, and then it's going to merge this Howard with this Howard, and so it's going to link up that way. Okay. Um, okay, so we have a question here. If I mess up and delete someone, can I just reload the database? The answer to that is no, because when you delete the person, it's deleting them out of the, out of the file on the disk. So what we advise is before you try any of this stuff that, that I'm showing you, the very, 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 first thing you should do is go up here to the file menu and go down here to backup. Okay, make a backup of your database. Before you start ever doing anything with the splitting um, and combining, but especially combining, because combining you're actually making changes to your actual database. Splitting you're not. Splitting you're taking information from your database and copying it into another uh, blank database. And so your original database is fine. Um, removing a line from your file, which was the second thing we showed, you're, you're actually creating a new file that has all of your data without the information that you don't want. But your original file is still OK. But when you get to combining, that basically involves adding information into your file, um, that type of thing. Before you do that, I strongly encourage making um, making a backup of your database before you do that. And Gail, yes, that was a good question. So thank you. OK. Um, now, let's say let's say I do have some duplicate some duplicate people in, in here. So for example, I am going to take um, I'm going to take uh, let's see what's the best way to do this. Let me Okay, I've got James, James, and Daniel. And so James right here, I think, James is Howard's father. James is Howard's father. So what I'm going to do is before what you saw me do was take James and drop him onto the father slot so that Roots Magic would automatically add him as the father. But let's say 
I don't, I didn't act, don't actually drop him on the father slot for some reason. I didn't think about doing that, or I've done, I, or, or I've, I dropped him there and I forgot to say he's the father. I forgot to say that James in 1830 is the father. I forgot to check that. Okay, what will happen is it will bring, it brings, brought James and that line over, but it didn't add him as the father. And so Roots Magic can still handle that. And what you can do is there's two different options. Either I can right here, I can say click to add father, or I can highlight Howard Smith Sr. and go up here and say add uh, parents. And when I say add parents, it's going to say, do you want to add the spouse to this existing family? In other words, do you want to add it to the family that has Ruth as the mom and Howard Smith uh, as the as a son and all these other children? And I can say, yes, add to that family. And when I click on that, it's asking me now to add that father. It's saying, okay, let's go ahead and add this father. Now, if I hadn't already dragged James over, I could say add a new person and I could type in his name and dates and all of that. But he's in this file because I dragged him over there. You just don't see him because I didn't link him in. So I'm going to say I want to select an existing person. I want to select James in 1830 who's already in there. And, okay, that's the one right there, James Smith from 1830. That's the father I want. I'm selecting him. And that links him in. So if I have, when you're combining files, if you use GEDCOM or whatever, or whatever, and you bring data over from one database into another, and they are not connected, the add commands, these add commands, add spouse, add parents, and add child, they all have two options. Add as a new person, which is the one you're usually used to using because that's where you're typing in that new person you just found. But there's also the select existing person, which you can think of as the link. So the add command lets you add a new person, add a new spouse, add a new child, add new parents, or it lets you link a father, a mother, or a spouse in that's already happens to be floating around in the file. So Always keep in mind that that add command can be used to link people together in your file that are already linked together. I mean, that are already in the file, but not linked together. Now, last thing I want to show you, um, when you're doing combining, and it doesn't matter whether you're doing combining kind of the way we have been. Um, let me go ahead and close this one. It doesn't matter whether you're combining uh, by importing a GEDCOM in, or whether you're combining in um, by dragging and dropping people, there's always a chance you can end up with duplicate records with more than one of the same person. Okay. Now, if you have that come up, um, it's, it's, what's called, it's what's called duplicate records. And under Tools, that's what Merge is for. That's what your Merge options are for. And um, we have a webinar on merging, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. But there are three merges. There's the automatic merges, which are the ones that we'll just go through and take care of a lot of, a lot of the, the really obvious ones for you. There's the duplicate search merge, which is where Roots Magic will say, these look like they're duplicates, but you have to tell me whether you want me to actually merge them. And then there's manual merge, where you go pick any two records and say merge them. The way I recommend doing this is start with the automatic merges. They're easy. Just select the automatic merges. Just go ahead and leave these all checked. Say begin merge, and boom, that's, that's it. It's taken care of a big chunk of the duplicates in my database for me. Okay, the real obvious ones, the ones that come from, you know, dragging and dropping people, it will get a lot of those. Okay, after you've done the automatic merges, go do the duplicate search merge. In other words, just step down through this list. Do the duplicate search merge, and just go ahead and choose the default options. Uh, as, you get, as you get braver, you can, you can, you can go decide what, what other information you want in order for it to look for those duplicates, tell it to search. And you can see, I don't have any more duplicates in this file, 
or at least no duplicates that, that Roots Magic can find because the automatic one took care of all of those for me. Okay. Um, let me go ahead. Ooh. Oh, okay. This is an error. In fact, I have a question from somebody asking about putting their database on Dropbox. Okay. This is a reason why I actually usually do not put my database in Dropbox. I happen to for this demo, but usually I don't because Dropbox will sometimes lock your database um, while you're using it and give you an error like that. So let me go ahead and get out of this one though first. And I want to go open, open another one because I think there's some duplicates in here. So I'm going to go to Tools and go to that duplicate search. Okay, actually, I guess there weren't any in there. Um, if you do the duplicate search uh, and merge, what you'll see is a list of possible duplicates, the two people, and you can go down through the list and highlight it, and you can look at all the details on them, and then you can say, go ahead and merge them. Um, once, you've, once you've done the automatic merges and gone through the duplicate search merge and merged the ones that it found, if you stumble across records that are duplicates, and, uh, and, and, and Roots Magic has not said that they're possible duplicates, there's usually a reason. Usually if, there's, if they have a different birth date, Roots Magic will say the birth dates are different or are different enough that, I, that it couldn't figure out that they were duplicates. And that's what the manual merge is for. That's where you can actually go select any two records. You select the one record, select the other record, and then merge it. So that's the one. Completely automatic, you've got to do it all. You've got to pick the duplicates, and then you've got to merge it. The duplicate search, it picks the duplicates, but you have to do them, actually do the merge. And automatic merges, it picks the duplicates, and it does the merge. Um, but that's what you can do when you're, when you're doing a lot of combining in order to, uh, you know, to, to get rid of those duplicates that you're finding in your database. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if there's any other, uh, any other questions. Um, let's see. Let's go down through here. Okay, like I say, I had, how do you save your file to Dropbox? Um, what I do, like I say, I do not keep my live database in Dropbox because of that fact that Dropbox will sometimes try to lock your file. Um, while you're working on it and give you weird little messages like that. I do, though, keep my backups in Dropbox. Uh, I used to keep my backups on a flash drive. So I used to actually go up and say File and then Backup. And I used to actually, right here where it asks where do I want to do my backups, I used to use a flash drive. But I don't do that anymore. I actually uh, keep this, keep my backups in Dropbox. Uh, the reason for that is because that way, one, my backup is not sitting here in my house. So if my house burns down and my backup is on my flash drive that's sticking in the, in the computer, you know, it doesn't matter that it's not on my hard drive. My backup is gone as well. Um, if I make my backup to Dropbox, if my house burns down and my computer melts, my backup file is still up on Dropbox. And if I've actually got other computers, that are on Dropbox as well, my backup is on them as well. So I do use Dropbox for my backups, but I don't use Dropbox for my live database. And you saw why. Um, some people keep their database on Dropbox and have no problems. And if it, if it works for you, great. But again, like with combining, make sure you keep good backups, because the last thing you want is for Dropbox to go in and lock your database and actually possibly even corrupt your database, uh, you know, so make sure you keep good backups. Okay, other questions. Is there an undo for the drag and drop operation? Uh, the answer to that is uh, there, that's what backup is. Yeah, is that'll, that backup will be, will be your, um, your undo. There isn't something that goes and says undo this um, because of the fact that every time you make a change to your database, it physically changes the file on your disk. Backup becomes almost impossible. Backup and, I mean, excuse me, um, undo becomes almost impossible because it would have to undo physical writes to the data file on your disk. Okay, word processors, spreadsheets, those are great for undo because all your data sits in memory until 
you actually save it. And so that it's easy to undo stuff that's in memory. But once it's committed to disk, that becomes a much, much harder job. So doing a backup is kind of your, is kind of your undo. If, you, if something messes up, you can restore that backup. OK. Um, somebody asked, said, also said they have a file, um, a file for their wife and one from them. Uh, is this how you would combine these files? And the answer is yes, if you want your uh, two files to be uh, combined into a single one, which, by the way, I personally, that's the way I do it. My wife and my file data is in the same file. Um, it just makes it easier to do things like print pedigree charts and ancestor reports for our kids uh, as opposed to having them in, the, in different files. There's nothing wrong with keeping your data in, in separate files. Um, I'm just saying that's the way I personally do it, but that doesn't necessarily make it uh, the right way to do that. Um, if I want to break my husband's family from mine, what's the easiest way to do it? So see, that's the exact opposite. So um, that's how you would do it, using that splitting a line out. Actually, um, we talked about removing a line from your file. Uh, Basically, the best way, if you actually want have a database that has, for example, yours and your spouse's line in the same file, and you want to create two files, one of yours and one of your spouse's, the easiest way to do that is to open your database, create a blank one like we just like we did before, drag and drop your line from uh, your database into that other one. OK, then create a second database and drag and drop your spouse's line from your database into that other one. The, the advantage of that is your database that's combined is still still there. You don't have to worry about it. it didn't it didn't get corrupted or anything. But you now have a line that has your husband's or your spouse's line and then has your line, a separate one with your line. Um, if all you have been tracking in your file is basically your ancestry and and their children, then the selecting the ancestors and their children is enough. If you've been following a bunch of collateral lines, um, then you're going to need to do the option that I mentioned of unlinking yourself from your spouse and unlinking your spouse from that family before you do it, and then then drag all the persons in that person's tree to get all those collateral lines. And again, as I mentioned, if you and your husband have uh, ancestors that were married, you know, in other words, you had you, you had part of your line merges in with with their line, that becomes a million times harder job to do. And in that case, I do recommend having uh, both lines in the same file. So if you and your spouse, if your lines merge out there a ways in, into the same line, uh, it is much easier just to keep both lines in that same file because as you find those shared names out there, you only have to enter them once instead of separately in each of your files. Okay, um, let's see if there's any others. Um, uh, when will we post this webinar? Um, <laughs> as, so as soon as it's available, uh, we will. Um, I, I don't know exactly when that's going to be posted. Okay, if you don't use live files, this is a good question. If you don't use live files on Dropbox, how do you use the iPad app with Dropbox? Um, basically, uh, dro when, when you use the, iP the iPad app, it has a, um, it, it creates a folder in your Dropbox folder. It creates one under apps slash roots magic. And I just copy my file into there. Um, so in other words, I, I work with my file on my hard drive, not in Dropbox. And if I want to basically put an updated version up there to sync, what I can do is don't do file backup. Don't backup into that apps slash roots magic folder because the iPad app does not read the backup. What you can do is come here and do copy. Okay, under the file menu, you'd select copy and then you go into your into your app slash roots magic and give it a file name and you would save it right there. And what that does is that keeps my file where it is on my hard drive, but it makes a copy of that file up there on Dropbox for the iPad app to find. 
Okay. Um, it looks like it looks like most of the other questions I'm seeing um, are either not related to to this or um, uh, or are copies of ones we've already at we've already answered. So I, I hope this has been um, informative to you. Hopefully uh, you feel a little bit better. Uh, in your understanding of how to split a line out of your database, how to remove a line from your file, or how to combine um, how to combine files uh, into into a single single larger file, and then be able to use the merge features to get rid of any duplicates, and to use drag and drop to minimize the amount of duplicates that you're going to end up with. Because if you create a JEDCOM file and import that in. You're, you're guaranteed to have a lot of duplicates. By using drag and drop and specifying where on the tree it goes and which group of people you actually want to copy over to the new file, you will greatly reduce the number of duplicates uh, that you end up having. So again, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you again uh, at our next webinar.